All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me here at We Live Entertainment for Don't Look Back. Jeff, I want to start with you as to where this project came from, because we are in the age of Karens right now with everyone in their cell phones. So how, talk about the creation of this and, and the idea. I know it started way back, way before Karens were a thing. Yeah, you know, I, the idea really started in my head because I've always been fascinated by the Kenny Genevieve story. Um, it was about a woman in the 60s in New York who was attacked and assaulted in her courtyard. And the story at the time was that all, like 30 or 40 people heard her screaming for help for a long period of time and nobody did anything. They debunked that story later on. Actually, I, I saw a documentary when I was location scouting for this where they debunked that theory, but that theory be became like urban legend. So that story's always stuck with me about, you know, how, how could these people do this? How could they see somebody in need and not even like call the police? Um, and that story's always stuck with me. And I've just seen, as I've, as I've gotten older, I've just seen that kind of phenomena happen where people, especially it's gotten even worse today where people will see something bad happening and their first instinct is, let me pull out my phone and report it as opposed to let me at least call 911 first and record it. So, you know, I, was, I like stories that have a universal theme to them. And I think the lack of empathy um, that people have towards each other. And we always kind of can, I think most of us have found ourselves in a situation where this has come up, like, do I step in? Is it going to, is it too dangerous? Is it, do I do nothing? Is somebody else going to help? So that idea is something I wanted to explore in a film that, you know, wasn't a straight up horror film, you know, like a Final Destination Karma Bloodbath, which mm -hmm. I love to do, at, you know, obviously those are awesome. And I didn't want to do a Friday the 13th, like slasher kind of version of this. And I, I so I wanted to, get into more of like focus on a character who didn't help and how the guilt, how that guilt kind of plays out with her and the other witnesses and how that incident affects like the victim's brother and how it affects everybody. So that's where I wanted to kind of play with this story. Now, one of the things I really like is I'm going to jump in with you, Courtney, because this is a role that it kind of, it, it's an unusual role in the horror genre because she's, she's, she's she has faith in in religion she's she doesn't feel like your normal leading lady in a horror film which is really interesting what how did you get involved i mean we were talking earlier you got the part really quickly how did you get involved and how did you kind of connect with this character uh i got involved just i i auditioned uh you know got it got the audition through my agent and i got the part i think I think I knew that I got the part or it was confirmed the next day, uh, which honestly was very jarring for me because I was like, oh, I'm so used to having to go through a process where you feel like you really have to prove yourself, like you know that you're quote unquote worth it. And I was like, I, I got this audition yesterday morning. And then I went in a couple of hours later and did it. And um, I just remember reading, I don't want to say too much, but I remember yeah. uh, the scene that I got um, I was specifically speaking about losing my father. Um, and I, unfortunately, I just have a lot of friends whose parents have passed away at a young age. And I watch how it has shaped their lives immensely. And I just think they're all amazing people. And they have a level of compassion that, uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like others don't necessarily, just because you have a broader understanding of the world um, and what it means to survive. So I was like, okay, if that is the one thing that sticks out to me right now, if that's all I can grasp from these couple of hours, rather than trying to overly prep or overly work it, that I connect to that part of the story. Mm. So I'm going to go in and try to work with that as honest as possible. And then when I got the part, I'm like, okay, well, then that's what I need to ride. That's what I need to work off of. Um, I have, you know, this young character of my age who's lost both of her parents and is, you know, trying to figure out where she stands in the world and then has all of these difficult things being thrown at her. And it's like, what else does she have to believe in but herself and what is honest to her? And so anytime she has all these other voices in her head, like I always feel like she's at the brink of, I was trying to keep in mind the idea of being at the brink of tipping over or feeling lost or feeling like you can't trust yourself. And what does it mean to double down, just reaffirm your own opinions and reaffirm your own beliefs? So that's, that's what connected me to it. 
Oh, uh, you did a hell of a job. It's a really Thank great you. performance. Yeah. Now, Will, I'm going to jump in with you. I'm going to try and be as fair as possible. <laughs> you know, uh, you you play a very interesting character as well. It's hard to mm -hmm. talk about a little bit. What was your approach, and how did you get involved? <sighs> Jeffrey Houghton. Um, how did I? I'm going to start with the second part. Mm -hmm. I auditioned too. I, I'm actually based in New York. It was my first LA audition. Oh. Um, so that was an interesting experience. But I, I auditioned and I had a few rounds. Um, unlike Courtney, they had to, hey. they had to, they had to <laughs> give me, a, put me through it to make sure I was right. Well, and in terms of playing well, the character. Well, he was, he was already picked, but they were like, you got to read other people. And I was like, okay, but I'm picking him. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt there. No, all right. Uh, and in terms of playing the character, which is, I don't know when this is going to air, but soon. Before the movie. Uh, before the movie. Uh, <laughs> soon. Is it airing right now? Um, <laughs> We're live! Character, I, I got to figure out how I'm going to say it. I think, I think it was just scene by scene and honesty in terms of what Courtney said. Um, Lucas is also an orphan, and by losing his brother, he becomes next level orphan. Mm -hmm. And I think that tends, tended to be my focus That's of a just good... doing that. That makes sense, that makes you sense, know? yeah. It's a very, well, it's a very emotional role too. I mean, you both have very strong, you know, obviously without getting it, giving too much away, you both deal with loss, both you and Courtney in some way. It's sure. really so that's always fun, I think, as an actor to kind of go into those dark places a little bit. Maybe not fun, but you know, exciting, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Skyler, um, the you know, after I saw the film and I saw it a while ago, one of the first things I said to Jeff was like, Yeah, uh, he's the nerd, he's the geek. <laughs> 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 We all said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're out surfing out there, being all cool. <laughs> he, he runs his hand through his long blonde hair. <laughs> oh, you freaking geek, you! <laughs> what was your? How did you approach this character? I, don't get me wrong. You do. You're terrific here. It's a really good performance. I really liked what you did. What What was it like? And what for you stepping into? kind of playing the the sidekick to the leading lady yeah i, I mean it was uh <laughs> see the hair thing right now <laughs> uh, guys come on um yeah jeffrey what, what, <laughs> i don't know why um we we had some fun some fun lines in there too that we kind of we we ended up axing but um yeah i mean I, i'm kind of the straight shooter honestly in it so it was it was super fun and easy um you know it's it's almost like a psychological thriller from courtney's character standpoint she's going through all these things and i'm just like hey what you know what, what are you talking about so i i'm, I'm kind of that, that guy so it's it was honestly it was really fun and really easy and uh you know the scenes with me and courtney too it's just we uh it was us two um that got there first out of the cast so we kind of got to uh shoot all of our stuff for most of our stuff first and kind of like you know build some of that chemistry and and um, I don't know, bond and, you know, you know, share stories and, and, you know, fun times together. So it was, it was me and her and, and that little, in the cottage uh, where, where all of our stuff takes place for the first week. So it was really cool. Nice. Um, should, yeah. that, should we roast Jeff a little bit right now? Should we roast oh, yeah. him a little? Oh, yeah. I want to hear, I want to hear Jeff's story. Wow. Everybody got it really excited there. Um, <laughs> what? Hey. What was it like, like, was there, were there moments where, you know, obviously it's, there's got to be some good having the guy who wrote the script directing the film, because he knows it's his story. What, was there moments where you're like, oh, I, I want to, I, I don't want to go with this line, or I want to kind of go somewhere else. How easy was Jeff to work with on this? <laughs> okay. Let's start with you, uh Courtney. I mean, he couldn't, it, it couldn't have been easier. It was so easy that there was a scene that uh, Skylar and I, as I said, we spent so much time in that house together. It was just the two of us. So many night shoots that first week. So we would just stay up for hours, like trying to do whatever we can to entertain ourselves, entertain each other, like stay awake and stay in it. And 
I, I don't know if it was Jeffrey or the AD, but came upstairs, it was probably Cedric, came upstairs and was like, uh, so this entire scene that you guys have been working on up here for however long, we are rewriting the entire thing. Jeffrey's going to go into a different room, he's going to rewrite it, and then we're going to come back and we're going to give it to you guys. And we're like, oh, okay. They handed it to us and they're like, okay, so you got it? You got it? Okay, come on downstairs. We're going to film it. And we were like, what are you talking about? We haven't even had a second to work on this scene. But it was also really nice because it, it kept you on your toes and like, he's, you know, he's standing right there. So we knew exactly what he wanted from this scene. So it's not like you were nervous about it, but um, it, it definitely was interesting having the writer there as the director at the exact same time. <laughs> Will, do you have any fun Jeffrey Rose stories? I think the only thing that really was troublesome for me is that he wrote a crow into the script and I had to act with a crow. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Uh, we didn't know what that thing was going to do. And yeah, that was, that was probably, yeah, I think all my rewrites came at least a day before, which there weren't many. It was just that daggone molting crow. <laughs> <laughs> do we love that guy? <laughs> it's a pretty cool, cool crow though. You gotta be. He wouldn't look at me. He wouldn't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor like, thing. <laughs> you got dissed by a crow, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, my beef's really with the crow, not Jeffrey, but he wrote <laughs> crow in, so. Fair enough. Jeff, come on, man. What are you doing now? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Skyler, what about you? What was, it, what was it like working with Jeffrey and, and finding this character and finding this voice? Um, well, yeah, when, when it comes to, I mean, you know, like on features, like when do you have the, the writer? You know, it's more of a TV thing where you have the writers on set on a sitcom or something doing rewrites. But, uh, you know, on a feature, it's when does that ever happen? It's, you know not in my experience really uh so that was you know any anything you um you know jeffrey what is this jeffrey this this but i will tack on to courtney's story um man that he put us in the in the hot seat i was like what we're literally gonna film this scene that you literally wrote on the spot um and we had to you know memorize and be given on the spot that was that was pretty exhilarating um i guess thank god for improv training you know it's like it, <laughs> It kind of gets you ready for stuff like that. You don't think it's going to happen, but, but then it did. But I mean, like she said too, it was, it was a blast. Like when does, when does that ever happen? You know, where you're like, scrap the whole scene. Uh, we just wrote a new scene and this is what we're doing now. Uh, lighting's ready. Okay. And uh, rolling, you know, and so, okay. <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, Jeff, Jeffrey was telling me a few stories about the, the shooting this and it's talk about a, a rush shoot. Jeff, how, how many days was this? Oh, you okay. know, we had 22 days, which is which is is not bad for for a film at our our budget. But we we also had a lot of locations and a lot of location changes, like a, a lot of them. It's funny because that one scene that they're talking about, we had to rewrite that because we were ru we were running out of hours. And so the producers came up to me and they're like, "We're, we're not going to make our day if if you've got to do this. You got to rewrite the scene. Uh, three minutes." I'm like. I need five at least. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> so I kind of consolidated this longer scene that had a bunch of different beats and things happening into it. So, um, but, it, but it was fun to work with the talent because I'm very big on collaboration. So I definitely talked to, to everybody to, to make sure they were comfortable with things. I think, you know, in particular, one thing that, that Courtney and I talked about a lot was Caitlin coming from her strength and, and, you know, not her giving into her fear because a lot of times in genre films, you know, you have the lead who will be like, am I losing my mind and breaking down? And like, yeah. then something happens to make them step up. And, you know, we talked a lot about that and just being really authentic to the character. So, you know, I think with all the characters, like a lot of what you see on screen is also because of their input and, you know, coming back with thoughts about how they should play this you know, because I'm, I'm, very, I'm just a, from a theater background, so I'm very collaborative. And I think if somebody has a good idea, you know, I think the actor, you know, I can write a character, but the people embodying that character start bringing stuff to it that I didn't see. And so it's, it was a really fun process working with them too. Yeah, I, I get the feeling like hearing these stories that from you that it, it, this was a very special set to work on. That was very collaborative and very, very a positive set with, with you know and, and making a low budget film is very difficult uh, i want to talk a little bit about the diversity of the film you we, we're at an age where i think people are pushing for a little you know nerds like um skylar over here uh, sorry i just gotta go back but there's a, 
side. <laughs> but there's a lot of diversity here, and you you chose some very interesting casting. Can you talk about the casting process and why you chose these three? Um, the good, you know, the the thing that I say, which is true, is I pick the best people for the parts. Mm -hmm. um, but what we what you know, because people like get really weird when you're talking about diversity because they don't realize that this has really only been a thing in Hollywood for probably five years where people yeah. are really talking about it and pushing it. Um, when I started in the business in 91, there was nothing for me. You know, my agent's like, you're like an ethnic Michael J. Fox. And, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, that, cool, he's awesome. He gets a lot of work. They're like, yeah, but you don't rap or play basketball. So there's nothing, literally that was the agents talking. And having, you know, I worked on, an, on another film where we were gonna cast, you know, all African-American and Latino actors and actresses. And I saw such a wonderful pool of talent out there. But when you're in a normal other process, unless you're focusing on that group of actors and actresses, if you're, unless your film is about diversity, the default is always white actors and actresses. So every audition that, or every film I've produced will send out a casting notice saying we're open to all ethnicities. 99% of the submissions are white actors and actresses. So uh -huh. they're always like, well, we picked the best person. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't look at a, a very big pool. Um, and so that's the difference. It's, it's you, you know, there's great talent of every race, religion, gen you know, there's just great talent out there, but the default in the Hollywood system, because that's kind of what they think is the safest bet to sell a film internationally is, well, let's send in, you know, our, our white talent. Like mm -hmm. that's just, that, that's just reality. And so since I'd already knew that there was such a strong pull out there, if I'd have done this with a, a studio, I wouldn't have been able to cast Courtney, you know, and that's why I wanted to do this independently because I would have got to cast who I want. I probably wouldn't have been able to cast all three of these people. I would have been like, you know, get us a, you know, a big name, you know, white actress, get us a big name, you know, super big name, like white actor, you know. So I got to cast like the film that I can sit back and be like, I got the best cast and they did a wonderful job. And I took that extra step of looking at pools of talent that I wouldn't have had a chance to look at if I'd been financed by a studio. Now, I want to jump in, speaking of, it's a little off topic but, but about diversity, but I want to talk with Skylar and, and Will. Have you guys found it a little more difficult as white guys in this business to find work? Because it is, it is changing. We are seeing a shift. Obviously not including the COVID thing of where, where like no one's actually filming anything, but have you guys found a little more competition or a bit harder to get auditions? So I guess I'll start with Will. Yeah, no way to, no, no. <laughs> Great way to put a landmine out there with <laughs> these guys. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't, I don't think I've been in this long enough I mean, I've only been pursuing this for about five years, which I, according to what Jeffrey just said, is when this all started. So I, I, I'm probably not your best reference to ask because mm -hmm. it's, it's been the same thing. I think what's exciting as an actor, which is on topic, but slightly off topic, mm -hmm. is when you feel like something was written for you in terms of diversity or not. And, and I think it's great to see anyone for any role if the role is open-ended, mm. but it's even greater when we write things specifically for people. This is, this is supposed to be for a, a 30 ish year old white male. This is supposed to be for a 40 year old black man, blah, blah, you know, and you, and you break it down like that. I think I get really jazzed to see that kind of stuff mm. in terms of diversity. And I think that's the change I've seen. Okay. Uh, versus like, my competition i think i've seen more specificity in story versus like my lack of auditions or my competitive my competitors i guess i should say mm. um that's an ally I don't right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but yeah I, I think that's the that's the thing and but in terms of like an actor that's what you want Mm -hmm. because you're getting more authenticity and you're getting realer stories and and it's just more exciting so well, a, yeah it's also it's more kind of, of a representation I'm kind of, I'm kind of scapegoating in a sense your your question but i i can't actually answer it because of my experience yeah no it, it's just i've heard a lot of 
it's it's a very weird time. We're in a very weird time in in Hollywood with everything going on. We're 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 facing. We're the good thing is we're facing more seeing more different colors on screen. We're seeing movies like Get Out, like this film. Uh, yes. We're seeing a lot of colors, and it's interesting the way things are changing. But it's also it's a hard business anyway. Uh, right. You know. Right. And that, I think the right roles find the right actors, mm -hmm. and I got to believe that. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't have the stomach to do this thing. So to, like, bring in the diversity thing as, like, an enemy is is just something I can't handle. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do it. Like, it's tough enough to do it on its own, so to bring that in as even, like, an option in my head doesn't feel like a thing. Plus, I don't know. I, I just think at the end of the day, to sort of answer your question, maybe direct, I still think there's way more white roles. So like, yeah, no, like, there are. no. <laughs> I feel yeah. like from a numbers perspective, I mean, because obviously it, it, it's a very difficult question that can get tense between people. But, you know, if uh, society is around uh, 54 to 56% white and the other, you know, pretty much half is people of color, yet people of color only make up, I'm really botching this, but let's say 30% of people on television. Sure. Um, and, you know, white people make up 70%. You know, the representation is disproportionate. So if you think of it in that perspective, white people are not getting less auditions. It's just life imitates art, which imitates life. How are you going to make an accurate represent representation of life if the people who exist in this planet are not being represented in the way that it actually looks like in life. So what Will was saying, I actually, I agree. I think it's so great when you, I auditioned for a um, television show yesterday that on the original breakdown, it said um, ethnically ambiguous, but then I'm mm. reading the thing and the girl is very obviously black. And I'm like, why is it that this writer literally wrote something for a black, it's so, it's it's not specific enough that I think it just jumps out at you. All they have to do is take out one line and she doesn't have to be black. Like Jeffrey was saying, all oh, because it's a person of color doesn't mean all of a sudden the entire thing has to be about their race. Mm -hmm. um, but it also is nice to just know like, this is written for a certain person. Let's just make these stories more specific. So then you don't have to worry about, you know, botching the numbers or making TV inaccurate. So then it doesn't all of a sudden have to be some big competition of you're taking roles away from me, you're taking roles away from me. It's just who is right for the part. Mm. Let's just know what the part is for. Right. I, I, think we're, I think we're in a, the business, unfortunately, where that, you know, it's hard enough to get roles anyway, you know, yeah. no matter how many, because it, mm -hmm. hundreds of, literally hundreds of people get submitted for every role. So I think a lot, I think a lot of that also comes from like, I'll hear agents, you know, my, my, some of my white actor friends and actresses, their agents are like, well, if you're not a minority, forget it. And that's kind of a cop out. You know what I'm I saying? Agree. I agree. I agree. It's just like, you didn't get the role. You're not getting call back. So they're going to blame it on that. So I think a lot of that is kind of stirred up, but you know, there are so many more platforms to have stories told and so many more people making films that are airing online, airing on TV, coming out in theaters at some point that there's not a lack of roles for everybody. It's just like I said, there's always been kind of one pool that people fish for talent in and there's an ocean out there of talent. And so now we're starting to look at that ocean of talent. And so it doesn't mean that there's, you know, the, the fish in the pool aren't the focus all mm. the time, but they're still right there in the center of everything. So every, good talent rises to the top, no matter what, what your ethnicity is or, or anything about you, I feel. Well, it's also, I feel like there's, I think you all you said it very well there's we're opening it up nowadays you have all these channels all these streaming services all, a lot of them are coming up with original content movies are being made that you can you know VOD is being very it's huge right now because we don't have for most of us a theater option which also kind of expands ideas because a lot of these channels cater to certain groups or whatever and it's kind of exciting to see where things are going to go from here, aside from the fact that, you know, we don't know what's happening with theaters, but it's exciting to see the stories being told, the original stories like this. Now, I'm going to jump into 
apologize about the awkwardness about that, guys. I didn't mean to uh, make it too. Oh long. no, there's no. Awkward. <laughs> no, I, I think it's an important question. It's an important yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. We talked yeah. about it so lot. I was so, just trying to diffuse diffuse going into it because I, yeah. as a joke, because I knew that yes, it's, <laughs> it's somebody funny. watching this is going to be like, oh, he asked the white actors what they think. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's a very, it's a tricky time because we're in an age where no matter what you're going to get, well, this actually brings me to my next question, where you're going to get either uh, called out, uh, you're going to get filmed, you're going to get, uh, you know, you're going to be put on the spot online. If you send out the wrong tweet, if you send out the wrong yeah. Facebook message, what is your guys' relationship to social media and dealing with, I know yours, Jeff, but let's start, Skylar, you haven't talked for a while. Let's, hey, what's, what, what's your, ma what, what's your uh, connection with social media and how do you respond to this kind of crazy world where all our, basically we rely on Twitter for news and all that stuff? I know, right? It's, we're, yeah, we're, get, we're getting our news on Instagram slides. Right? Days. Or from uh, uh, Kelly Ann Conway's daughter. <laughs> oh, God. I don't, I don't even know. I heard something. I saw the headline, but I don't even know what it was about. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was, for me, it's like a, it's a love-hate. You know, it's, uh, I was just telling someone this the other day. Uh, I love social media because it's like, for example, I have a group chat with my sisters. So it's like, before we would, you know, text every now and then we would, you know, we'd hang out holidays and whenever everyone's in town, whatever. But now it's like me and my sisters can send each other, um, you know, memes every day, you know, 90s kids memes and fun, stupid stuff. Um, but then, you know, there's the other, the hate professional side of it and political side where it's just, you know, political season. It's like, oh my God, it's like, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. And then, you know, when it comes to the professionalism and the work, you feel pressure, you have to always be, you know, posting and uh, promoting yourself and creating content and all these other things so i'm trying to find that balance with it um you know it, it is what it is it's definitely the future it's it's free marketing so yeah i mean that you have to look at the silver lining it's it's uh we are able to market ourselves for free and put ourselves out there and if you're you know creating and, and you know doing thing things of value uh people are going to see it on on social media so so there there it's a love hate it's you know it's, there's two sides to that sword and you know it's, it is what it is so it's just I'm trying to make the best of it. I'm trying to, you know, I, I honestly, I did like a two year, almost a two year, like kind of hiatus where I was just like, it's, I, it's, I, I don't love it. Like, it's just like, I'm worried about how many likes I'm getting. Like, how stupid is that? Um, yeah, it's just ridiculous. They're like, my pictures don't look as good as someone else's pictures or I'm not, I'm not posting or promoting what I need to be, you know, in my career or whatever. So, but uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to work with it now. And, you know, I, I definitely once, once this comes out, I'm going to be blasting all over social media. I got a buddy that's on Twitch, which I just learned about Twitch. It's the, the gamers do it, but you can also live stream um, movies. So when ours come out, we're going to, we're going to do that. And we're going to have all, all his fans and I'll blast it in all my social media. And, you know, they'll probably put it on their social media and we can, we're, we'll watch it and, and on Twitch and, and talk about it as, as we watch it. So there's that. That's, that's cool. That's fun. It's really, it's, it's yeah. just, we can't put our phones down now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. What, about, what about you guys? What, I'll, I'm going to go in order from how I see you. Will, what, what is your relationship with uh, social media? Not strong. Uh, <laughs> if you looked at mine, I, you might not know I was an actor. Uh, I don't do it much. I, I took it off my phone a while ago. I just have it on my iPad. I don't even have a computer right now. Wow. Um, so I, I can only look at it at certain times. I think it is like important to have. I'm, I'm from kind of two different worlds. Um, and I'm very active in both those worlds. So it's kind of nice to see from a political perspective, those two perspectives to uh, sort of weigh out what the hell is happening. Mm. Um, but I, I'm not very active, to be honest with you. No, it's a it's a weird uh, it's a weird thing. I always I always yeah. feel paranoid. I always have to like oh I, I I'm about to I, I always do the check and delete before you know before I actually send or respond yeah. or you know it's crazy. Courtney, what about you? Um, I don't know. It's a slippery slope. I think I I'm, not, I'm the youngest out of everyone. Not to reveal you guys. Uh, <laughs> I um, I am. I'm old enough to know what it's like to not wake up with your phone next to you every day, not wake up and look at social media immediately. 
Um, however, I'm young enough to know that a vast majority of my life experience has been that. And now that I'm older, I feel like my biggest goal is if I ever find enough success in my career, I would just get rid of it. I don't want that to be, to be a part of my my game, my knowledge. I keep my Facebook mainly because I get to see people's birthdays. Yeah. And I think Instagram is great <laughs> because I get this. I should get back on it to do that. Because <laughs> you see those birthdays and you're like, oh no. That's like the I'm downloading thing. Facebook right now. Oh, like, oh no. You don't just know someone's birthday. Or like Instagram, you see it on their story or something. I'm like, oh, I just, I knew that on the top of my head. Um, <laughs> but I just, aside from that, I, just it makes you feel bad about yourself it can can. it's not I think all the things that are good about it are great so I I try to do the thing where I I I don't have it on my phone so I'll just check on my laptop to just stop myself from like if I'm feeling bored okay I'm gonna sit there and stare into space until I figure out something to do or I will read a book like I will no longer pick up my phone and scroll through TikTok I'm like I can't I can't keep doing, going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with Jeff, uh, Jeffrey, I'm gonna, I know yours a little bit. I want, I'm going to change your question a little bit. Uh, how does social media affect you as a filmmaker? Ha- has it, ha- telling stories like this, how much do you rely on this kind of world and, and kind of finding a balance? Um, you know what, I'm, I, I'm not good at finding balance sometimes. Um, I sleep with my phone in my bed, but that was a habit from, that was a habit from when my mom was alive because she was older. So I just always wanted the phone near me. But now, unfortunately, I do find myself checking, checking Twitter and checking the mail. Um, Creatively, I think it's good because it lets me stay in contact with the fans in a much more intimate way than I could before. And so I I really use that to focus on everything. Um, It helps me promote my friend's work you know, I promote my own stuff, but you know, I, that's the good stuff. That's a good part of it. But you know, one friggin' tweet about something that's going to get me upset. And then it's like, I go to, I don't do the delete. I just tweet it, <laughs> but, but I, I try to be mindful of what I do. And then I, I've gotten a lot better because I used to, re- I realized how much time I was spending on line was just mm. ridiculous. Um, and it's just not, it, don't, it not only makes you feel bad about yourself, it makes you feel bad about the state of the world. Yeah. And we don't realize that only a small, small percentage of the world's population, even the US is actually on Twitter and Facebook. But mm-hmm. when you get so caught up in that world, you put so much emphasis on what the people on that, those platforms think. And, and so, yeah, I'm trying to use it for more positive stuff, but you know, it's not easy sometimes. Yeah, no, for sure. And you, well, what I like is the fact that you kind of expanded the ideas behind like an unknowing, un, invisible, thing that's going after these people into such a unique mystery and not just gone the same route as final destination it's such a smart move for you but what about you guys when it comes to horror courtney i know you had a small role in it follows i did (laughs) that's pretty rad you. you go from it follows to basically headlighting a horror film (laughs) by the guy who did final destination i know that's a what what is your relationship to horror are you a fan that are do what are your some some of your favorite films um uh i became a fan of horror maybe within the last couple of years i i personally really like horror that has some kind of i I don't know it's like an analogy or i guess a metaphor to some other life experience um Mm. Like, I love Hereditary, I love so Midsummer. I love Get Out, like, films like that have just changed the game for me, and, like, if anything, I feel like they seem very similar to theater, or it follows, just because the, you have to sit there, and you have to analyze it, like, you go home, and you can talk to your friends for hours about what's going on there, um, Final Destination, when I was a child, I was in elementary school when those movies came out, so I wasn't allowed to see them at the time, <laughs> but they ruined roller coasters for me. I always thought a log was going to come out and get me if my parents were driving on the highway. <laughs> so it's so interesting because I think horror films have just changed over the years of what they were about. And mm. so the the classics, like the really good horror films like Friday and stuff, it, I'm just not, that was not the time that I was 
And my parents would never allow me to watch those things. I get so scared of everything. I'm still afraid of the dark. So it was so nice being able to work on this film. <laughs> Uh, because I felt like it really targeted like my specific brand of horror that I really like. Nice. Saying, is she crazy? Is she not crazy? But why is she going crazy? What's going on here? Oh, there's a, there's a jump here. It's, uh, I think it's just a mix of so many different worlds and I really admire it. Well, it's also you're jumping in when we're, there's, a, there's a heavy emphasis on emotional horror. You mentioned Hereditary. You mentioned Midsommar. Mm -hmm. Literally every horror movie that has been coming out has kind of gone a little deeper into the psyche psyche of our human nature that's interesting uh, and that, you? Horror, that is i feel like yeah. if you think about it what everything that makes you in life like when you randomly do get terrified when you do get scared it is always psychological and then you sit mm -hmm. there and you analyze like what got me that afraid what triggered me that much so i love that films are actually sitting there and they're like okay let's write about something that really explores those ideas yeah and th the opening of this film is such a powerful freaking image you're like this is this is emotional you're dealing with stuff that's why everything you that happens you kind of buy it as an audience because you're like you're under trauma this is a bad time right you know what about you will what is your history what what do you do you love horror are you a horror fan are you a final destination fan i gotta ask <laughs> huh um <laughs> i I don't even know. This is horror. I watched The Mummy when I was like nine years old and it scared the shit out of me. The uh, Brendan Fraser? Yeah. <laughs> so I really up. avoided it. And then like five years later, I walked down the stairs to the basement in my house. My sister's watching The Ring and it's the scene where the, the little girl is at the well and they're watching horses up on the hillside and the mom puts the bag of her head and dumps her down the well. So I really avoided it like the plague for a long time. And then I did a little indie horror film right when I got out of school and it totally changed my perspective. I didn't know the community and what it was. It was sort of insane to learn about of like, whoa, there's so many versions of this genre. But I would, I would say in terms of recent films, I would jump on the bandwagon and say Get Out was probably my favorite. Mm, yeah, there's a there's another good film. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw. I know Jeff, you Annabellum is really terrific too. I'd highly recommend that as well. Skyler, what about you? What is your relationship with horror? Yeah, I'm I'm a big fat scaredy cat too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel like a bunch of big fat scaredy cats. <laughs> that probably makes for a good cast though. We're we're like yeah, we're the, we bonded. We were always scared. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, we thought we thought that uh, the attic was haunted on set too. That was terrifying. <laughs> what? I mean, there was a swing in the attic we filmed that. That was terrifying. Oh that was my scary. gosh, it was very scary. Like what happened? What 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 happened with the swing? Did it just start moving or? Yeah, no, just, we we went up there and you can't see anything. It's pitch black and you just hear the slow creak. Then you turn around and you just there's like a little glimmer of light and there's just there's this swing. It's just slowly moving. Nothing else is up there. No no one's around. And we're like, what the heck? And then I turned around, everyone went downstairs. I turned around and holy shit, there was this, there was this image on the, on the swing. And then I freaking ran out of there. I was terrified. Never went back. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's was it a crow? Cool. <laughs> was it a, that was a crow baby. showing up? <laughs> they might have played a prank on us, but it was terrifying. Well, no, I, you know, we did a, I, I do a show that I uh, had, you know, I had Jeffrey on. It called Sound Scary. And we did it at the Mystic Museum over here in uh, Burbank. And, you know, after the show, we were doing a little Instagram live, and the place is supposedly haunted. They buy cursed objects. And uh, at one point, we heard this ding, 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 and we're like, what the hell was going on? We look over, and a little lantern was just going, boom, 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 like that. Oh, we're like, Pfft. and literally the second we got to it, it just stopped. It no. just stopped. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, you got, you've got, have you, oh, well, you got to go to the Mystic Museum. It's a lot of fun. It's really creepy. No, it's all really? right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Co COVID was enough for me. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we have enough real scares right now, too. So, you know. Yeah. yeah Jeff, I think you didn't tell me it was haunted. I don't think you well, told me about that. <laughs> it, was a, it, was, there was, it was the creepy attic up there um, with yeah. the swing. Yeah. I didn't, I, didn't get to, I didn't see it, but I'm actually glad that I didn't see it move because I Perfect. keep saying it. I, I definitely believe in this, you know, the next world and paranormal stuff. But I don't actually want to experience anything scary because I'm a big scary cat too. Um, so it's like, just if I ever do see a ghost, I want it to be Casper. 
you know, but I already know Devin Sawa who played Casper. Yeah, you know Casper um, already. Oh, so. <laughs> Casper doesn't scare me. So yeah, when I see Devin, I see enough ghosts for me, so. Well, guys, uh, this it went a little longer, um, but it's honestly, I really love the film. And I think you guys all did an incredible job. It's a really great cast. It's a really fun movie to watch. I've seen it twice. I liked it more the second time. So yeah, congratulations to you all. It's a, and so now when the movie comes out on the 16th, I believe. Next uh, Friday. Next Friday. Are we looking yep. at a, a VOD or a VOD in theatrical? Um, they're looking at um, DV or DVDs. They're looking at drive-ins. Starts with a D. So we'll, we'll find out this <laughs> probably by the end of this week. You know which drive-ins hopefully it'll be playing in, but it'll definitely be on on-demand platforms. And it's you can pre-order it on iTunes right now. And we're actually having a sale this weekend. I'm going to email all you in the cast, but they're having a, a sale on iTunes if you pre-order it this weekend. So we're oh. I'm just really excited to get the movie out there. I want to take a quick screenshot because it's the first time. We've had everybody together for a while. Please do. Uh, it's such a nerd thing to do. I don't know how to do it on my computer, so I'm doing it on my phone. <laughs> oh, it's a nerd thing? Let Skylar do it. Yeah, yeah. Skylar does. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, type in that code and uh, good. So, uh, <laughs> your well done, email. nerd. <laughs> I, I, you know, literally, Skylar, I was like, this, this, I saw the movie and I'm like, what the fuck, Jeff? Come on. <laughs> I know. I walked, I walked the in the dirt. room and I was like, Brad Pitt's here. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, everyone but, smile. I have the screen. I have the screenshot ready. Are we ready? Okay, ready? ready? Three, two, one. Hopefully, okay. I wasn't counting. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. There we go. Do, you, do one more. Do one more. For, oh, okay. <laughs> one weird one. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> but you know, that's what I, I was scratching my head. <laughs> um, but that's what I, you know, but uh, the funny thing is, I what I like about this, the casting too, is I got to let people play roles that they probably wouldn't get cast in because yeah. you know Skyler honestly is one of the sweetest nicest smartest he, yeah he's just one of the sweetest nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life and you know if you saw him on the street you'd be like that douchebag um actually at one time I was walking from Starbucks <laughs> That's what and, and, and Skyler was Skyler was leaned against his his motorcycle and I looked at him and I was like he's hot but he looks like a douchebag and it was, then he was looking at me, he's like, Jeff? And I'm like, oh, that's Skyler. <laughs> he's the nicest guy. So you, you know, you look at him and you like, you want to punch him in the face. But, um, but he's a sweet guy. I didn't guy. feel that way, Skyler, just so the record's clear. I love you too. <laughs> and no, and Will, and you know, also Will, Will does com, you know, Will's got a, a, you know, he does a lot of comedy, you know, he's oh. a lot on comedy. Um, but when I saw, when he did his audition scene, he played it. I think authenticity is so important when we talk about, when I, especially when I talk about this cast, um, is th that was so important to them. And when Will did his audition, like I saw like the authenticity in him, in his audition, whereas I felt like pretty much every other person that I saw that read, w was trying to act that scene. And with Will, I, I felt it. And that's why they were all, people were kind of like, because the minute I saw it, I'm like, that's, that's the guy, that's Lucas. And they were mm -hmm. like, well, let's read other, you know, just because they were seeing like somebody Let's read other acting. people Get that? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't give people stuff easy you know yeah i know but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody everybody here and everybody that is not here you know they all were very um they you know communicated with me and i was with them but they all wanted to make sure they came from a very authentic place mm -hmm. um, and that was that was amazing well, I think that, and it, it plays out. This is a cast that, you know, I, I think I told you when I watched it, I was like, this is, they just gel. They all work. It's like a really nice, comfortable, strong, good performances. This is something good. This is something special. And I, that's why I wanted to do this with all of you guys, because I knew it was something a little different. Jeff's a good friend of mine. And I, I, I just want to promote this as much as possible. And, it, you know, We Live was giving me the opportunity to do it. So I'm, I'm, yeah, simple as that. You're welcome. You're welcome. So uh, let's, let's just do one more. Let's fuck it. Let's do one more question. Um, what, you know, with the movie, have you ever been in an experience where you've seen something and uh, uh, going on and having seen people getting their phones out and filming? Have you ever been in an experience like that, Courtney? Oh, God, yeah. Um, Actually, I saw a fight break out uh, 
maybe a year ago, like right before COVID really hit. Oh my. My first instinct, I noticed that they were about to start fighting and I grabbed one of my friends and I was like, we're walking, we're, we're walking. And all my other friends were like, why, why, why? And I was like, there's about to be a fight. And then they all pulled out their phones and they started filming and I walked away. But the thing is, I mean, what's, I don't know what's better. I, I not only did I not pull out my phone in case you do need some kind of, I don't know, image to help the person or protect the person who was hit. I left, I didn't stop anything. I didn't do anything. Cause in that place, I'm like, I'm a small, person like I, what am I going to do throw a punch yeah so it's so it's so interesting watching this film that you look at all these characters and you want to judge them for not doing anything and you have sympathy for Caitlin because you know her backstory sure. and you know that that's triggering for her but at the same time isn't the whole point of the story that you don't know what somebody's reasoning is for not wanting to step in and get involved and I'm not saying it's a good I'm not saying it's good to not help other people I think we all should sure um, it definitely would have been better if I had called the police or I had done something more responsible, but to really expect <laughs> your face, Will, to really yeah, expect Jackie Jackie Will. Character, Amanda's <laughs> character to walk up to these two large men when one is brutally beating the other, it's just, it's not realistic. In no. my I mean, I, but I know a lot of girls my size who are like, are you kidding me? Like, let's boss up, let's go. And I'm like, absolutely not. So I just, I think it's interesting to judge other people for their choices of what they do to protect themselves while simultaneously we have to be there for each other as citizens and step in and put yourself on the line even if you don't want to. So, yeah. yeah, it's a tricky thing because you, you know, when you see something happening, it's like, are you just going to add to the problem by just jumping right. in and trying to problem, you know, create, you don't know. And it's, and it could just be a, a quick fist fight and then over in a few minutes, you know, so it's a, it's a very, mm -hmm. this film explores some interesting moral questions. Yes, in a, in a very smart way. What about Will? What about you? Have you ever had been an experience? I mean, we're obviously seeing a little bit of more of it lately, but have you had the experience like someone just going crazy, pulling out phones or anything like that? I mean, I'm on New York City subways all the time. So oh, God. Uh, yes, you have. Yeah, I watch, I watch, <laughs> just to be crude, I watch people film people pooping on the train. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, I one time, no, I don't want to tell that story. Yeah, I see it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious, Skyler. No, I, no, I, it's not that. Oh, come on, Will. <laughs> I went, no, one time, I saw, a guy, I saw a guy and I saw a guy and a girl fighting, and a lot of people are filming it, and you're like, oh my god, like this guy and girl are fighting. And I was like, I'm gonna go stop it. And thank God for me, another guy went up first and was like, hey, hey, stop what you're doing. And the girl <laughs> who he thought he was trying to help just socked him right in the face. <laughs> that, I've seen that thing happen. I've yeah. seen, literally and, and seen that like, happen. I was like, good to know. And now I don't know what the, that was like in my first year oh, in New York. And I'm, I'm from West Virginia. Uh, wow. So, yeah. West Virginia oh, forever. The guy that breaks up the fight that gets the, the, the final. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't, so I don't really know what to think, but a lot of people got that on camera. So wow. I was like, I will help from like a, I think I, I keep the COVID distance for my helping always. For Stop sure. what you're doing. <laughs> and I try that. Yeah, I try that. How, you know, does that work? Get a poll and be like, not today, but, <laughs> and I run. <laughs> Skyler, what about you? The, the only thing I can think of is uh, like my, my first or second year in LA, I, I did, I witnessed a public shooting actually, which wow. is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, the, I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was, it was a guy that shot, um, he shot like this big music producer. Um, and it, he just like, he came out of, so there's a 24 hour fitness in Hollywood and I had just come out of the parking structure uh, I parked on the street. I was like walking across the street. And then this guy came out like minutes later. And the story ended up being like in the news that uh, his girlfriend broke up with him or something. And, uh, but he just, he just lost and he just started going out. Um, it was like Hollywood and Vine where that 24 hour fitness in McDonald's is. And he just started shooting at cars and shooting at people. Um, and it, it was great. Like there was, I mean, you know, he was an active shooter. So there was literally yeah. nothing. I could have possibly done 
uh, and everyone was just trying to get down and take cover. Um, and luckily there was a, there was a set nearby and a, and a cop that was on, you know, we have, uh, you know, cops on sets a lot of times or whatever. And he came by and he, he shot the guy, but, uh, it, it was, it was crazy. It was just chaos. Uh, he's shooting at cars. He's shooting mm -hmm. at people, a, a guy on the street. That I was like close to me got uh, grazed by a bullet. Um, but yeah, it's just like you know, you we especially we hear about public shootings all the time now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like you know, he, he it, there was a lot of you know, he's in the middle of the street, but you know, if you're trying to close any distance with with an active shooter, it's like you got no chance. Um, yeah. uh, so it, it was pretty that was that was my welcome to LA. Uh, wow, that was yeah, that was like my, my first or second year in LA um but yeah that, like that's the only thing I could think of you and you're trying to think like what like what can I do like what what do you do um let, you know luckily there happened to be that that cop on a set that was like a couple blocks away but um yeah I mean it could have been a lot worse on he could have taken out a lot more people but. well I think I remember hearing about that too yeah actually a super big music producer got yeah. shot and I may killed or at least very very you know hurt so yeah well and then you know he's shoot, shooting cars shooting a bunch of you know shooting at a bunch of people so wow well the, i get you know the thing is it's like like you said it's this is a moral dilemma that we all deal with on whether we see people in in stress or or, or, or issues happening how far do we go to help how what, what can we do to help and i think it's an interesting question i think this jeff you 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 did a very good job of exploring that well i and i think it, yeah we can all agree that at least seeing this movie is something that you all can do um, <laughs> um and it'll make you feel good it'll make you think and it'll scare you mm -hmm. yeah so that's exactly what we all set out to do so and you'll, it'll scare you in a fun and exciting way i highly recommend see the movie watch it get it own it do what you need to do congratulations guys all, thank thank you. all of you thanks thank man. you so much it was great talking with you yeah cheers guys